frame setup is all right here. Yeah. Uh, and then the mirror will be facing the other direction. So that, that fixture will be mounted onto the crane and then lift it all the way over into the position it needs to go to drop down. We'll lift the segment out, rotate the dome around to bring the dirty segment out and then lower it back over here. Control. Hey George, can I kind of slide the jack down to you right yes. here? Y'all need anything else? Okay, I'll rem I'll make a note about that passive, so we're not scrambling for it later. So we're getting this fixture set up for doing swaps. We're doing segment 5-5 five five today. So I have to get the fixture set up so that it's at the same tilt and the same um, elevation that the segment coming out is. That way all three attachment points are at the right angles to attach at once. There are 91 in the array, and I think we have four spares. Is that right, Cheney? Yeah, four spares. Do we still need to take the dome around to 70 or just slide it with, for, to get to 5.5? Five five? No, at 35 right now, you're just going to move it straight in. OK, cool. And once you're in a comfortable spot and lowered some, we'll put it to its pick location of 10. So it's going to rotate around that direction counterclockwise if you're looking above. Uh, normally we'll do two segments and we'll typically when we're fitting in two segments we show up at like 7 30 in the morning. Um, typically it's still dark too so we're working with headlamps at that point so that way we don't damage any of the equipment that's still doing calibrations in the morning. But we'll get the first segment fully swapped out by about 10 a.m. and then the second one hopefully by noon and that's assuming there aren't things that go wrong. <laughs> Sometimes equipment breaks or doesn't cooperate or some of these are really funky angles to access and it takes a lot of dome wiggling and that takes time to get that iteration right. The glass itself is about 250 pounds and then the frame that it rests on is somewhere between 30 and 40. So the whole thing is probably pretty close to 300 pounds. And then we just lower it onto that table and move it into the lab so we can get started disassembling it. I was gonna make a joke, but you were in the middle of the conversation. I was gonna, like when it was like 15 feet in the air, I was like, Shane, you can reach that, right? And I was testing the strap. Okay. so right about putting hub shims in there when we're taking them out. That would make so much sense. Um, and then the, the acid part is very calm. I mean, it's cool to watch, but there's not a lot of 
splashing. So if you wanted to put the camera in here somewhere for that, okay. it would probably be fine. But once yeah. I start like washing it off, there's going to be water all over the place. Sure. So I don't think you would want the camera in there for that. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but I'll lay this. I'll go ahead and lay this down flat since I'm in here. So it'll be about here, mm -hmm. and then it'll have uh, tissue on top, and then I'll put acid on top of it too. Um, and then, yeah, the, uh, that's that part takes maybe 10 minutes, and then the acid sits on there for 15, mm -hmm. and then I'll come in here and start spraying water all over the place. This is a diluted hydrochloric acid mix we call Green River because of its color. And I'm spraying it over a piece of very delicate tissue paper that'll hold it onto the top of the segment. And then this acid will eat through our super thin uh, aluminum coating to fully clean off the mirror. So we'll let it sit for like 15 minutes after I squeegee out all the air bubbles and then uh, come back and clean it all off. I 
we want to be able to visually monitor how the aluminum is melting, if it's going appropriately. Um, sometimes if there's contaminants in there, you'll see little sparks shooting off around the aluminum, which you don't want to see, but occasionally it happens. And so what we're doing right now is trying to gradually melt it. We don't want to thermally shock anything. So we gradually add energy into that liner and then we let it stabilize for a few minutes and then it adds again. And luckily it's all automated. It's a program someone created through trial and error. And as long as we keep every run consistent, we can just run the program and it should automate it. When we coat the mirror, we put in four uh, basically lab slides, they're just microscope slides with it uh, so that we can test the reflectivity after it comes out. So I'm taking each of those out because it's way easier when it's mounted to the fixture than when it's on the rotating fixture over there. And then I'm also uh, opening up and taking the pins out of the locking mechanism that holds the X fixture to the rotation mechanism. And I was joking with Cheney when I was putting this one in that it went in on the first try, which means I'm going to have to try this like three times to be able to take it out, and line it up properly. And then I connect this to power and crank it up so I can pull the segment out. We have to be able to lift these segments in and out. Um, so I just lifted the rest of the cart up to meet the axles inside of the chamber. And then we have to lift it just a little bit to get the tops of those mushrooms out of the spot that they latch into. And then I was wiggling it while I was bringing it back down just to make sure that nothing was pinched or catching incorrectly. lights too. So even with this being as pristine as it's going to be, you can still see scrapes and little water lines in some spots. Let's see. I don't know what angles you can see from over there, but there's some water spots down here. There's little scrapes over here. There's another foggy area on the edge here. So we're always going to have those permanent decorations. But for people looking at them all pretty, this is the best as it's going to get. <laughs> you might need more down. I do. I got it. Go for it. Go for yours first. This is too short for Shane. He can't help anymore.
How many of these have you done? Uh, this is my second time doing groundwork, <laughs> but um, for up in the array. How many times? Yeah, I don't know. Third. You've been here a little over a year, yeah. and we haven't been doing them as frequently as we should. But you Maybe know, like twenty. Yeah, twenty seems 20 like a good so. guess. Oh yeah, that looks like almost exactly where it needs to be. Yeah. <laughs> George. It's someone under the array right now. And then once they have it detached, I'll take control back and lift it out of the way. You moved it to 40, right? Um, yes, okay. instead of 35, 40 for coming out. So three times a week, uh, we go in over the primary mirror to clean uh, the mirror with uh, CO2. So what we have to do is, is rotate the structure and uh, use this big man lift to go in through this uh, triangle in the telescope structure, then go over the primary mirror and uh, spray it with high purity uh, CO2. And it's basically dry ice uh, snowflakes that we uh, blow on the mirror to remove the dust. Uh, yeah, we typically sort of go down the one side of the mirror, up again in the middle and come down the other side, you know, and then we done. It takes about uh, 20 minutes or so to, to clean the mirror. It's it a lot looks, of It looks beautiful. I mean, I, yeah. Saw five, six years ago. It was not looking yeah. like this, Urban. 